the nicest way of saying I'm old that I've ever heard. <laughs> Pillar, she's been around a long time. She's an old post in the kingdom. This is a good month. Hallelujah. This is a good month. How many of you are seriously doubting that? I mean, come on, be honest, right? How many of you have had some problems with that one? I got you. I, got you. I feel you. If my son would say, I feel you. <laughs> well, Shabbat Shalom. No, we're not Jewish. Uh, but we are celebrating some of the things that God has put in place. You know, y'all are scattered so far and wide tonight. <laughs> Thou art farthest from mine vision, O oh, those on the back row. <laughs> it's as Old Testament as I get, okay. Hey, we're really glad those of you who are joining us online tonight are joining us too. And if if Apostle Buddy or Prophet Mary are watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're glad you're here tonight. Um, how many of you have never been to a head of the month service before? This is your very first time of visiting a head of the month service. <laughs> uh, we are so glad you're here. I am so sorry you have me tonight instead of Prophet Catherine because she does this so much better than I do. But I have a lot of fun, so you know, y'all just come on and join with me on this one. Um, we're not Jewish, we're not into the Jewish tradition. We are into the things that God has put in place. So you know, God says that he does things in times and in seasons. And God's seasons are important for us to be conscious of because in his seasons, he, has, he says for everything there is a time and a season. And in the timing of God, he has patterns and things that he releases at certain times. And the Jews understood this, and unfortunately, as often is the case, when God releases a truth, man grabs a hold of it and makes it a tradition. Uh, you know, every major truth that God has ever released, man has grabbed a hold of, and form some sort of a religious tradition around it. And the tradition is so stressed that the reality of the truth often gets lost. And that's the case, unfortunately, very much so uh, within the Jewish religion. God, all the stuff you saw that God established in the Old Testament was a type. And the, the Bible clearly tells us this is a type, it's a symbol, it's designed to be a reminder, it's designed to be a marker for us going forward so that we remember, because we're bad about forgetting what God says to do. And, you know, hello. Um, and so God put these, uh, put these feasts and festivals and seasons and times and markers in place, not so that we would get wrapped up in the tradition, but so that we would remember what God had done and what God was saying. Well, we have as a church today, and I'm glad for it, we have begun to revisit those markers. Not the traditions, but the markers. And one of the markers that God put in place that the Israelites celebrated on a regular basis was called the Rosh Kadesh, which is literally the head of the month. And they went through a process of you know, these little guys out in the field, you know, and they're standing out there and they're waiting, and as soon as they saw a little teeny piece of moon showing up from the you know, the new moon coming in. As soon as they saw a little sliver and one other person could see it too, then boom, they ran off. This is the head of the month. And it was a reminder that at the beginning of each month, God had something new to say. Amen. You see, God's calendar and God's seasons, not only are his mercies new every morning, but thank goodness, every month... He sets in place 
some new things to release to us. You know, and I've always thought about that. Now, God didn't need a Jewish calendar for us to keep track of time because human beings by nature are going to do that anyway. So I often wonder, what was that all about? Why did God do that? And I believe that there is a heavenly pattern and a heavenly, I, this company I'm working with recently uses the phrase cadence a lot, you know. What's the cadence of the business? What's the rhythm of the business? Well, it, it's worthwhile to think about because there is a cadence to the universe. I was watching one of those shows, you know, I, my, I have a son who decides he's gonna be a scientist. And so every what on earth, uh, what's in the universe, uh, sci any kind of science, anything that has anything to do with the universe and the world and what's happening, I, he's watching it and I have to sit and watch it with him. <laughs> I'm learning way more than I ever did in school, I promise you. But it's very interesting. You know, one of the things they're, they, now get this one, I know y'all are gonna be shocked at this. Y'all just hold on to your hats. There's a pattern to the universe. Yes. <laughs> da 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 da. <laughs> and it's interesting because the world comes up with some of the most convoluted explanations to try and dodge the fact that God had all this planned. I, I, you, string theory, parallel universes. You know, out of the trillions of trillions of parallel universes, it took all that many to come up with one that had all... I, I sat and laughed. My son was looking at me like, why are you laughing, Mommy? I said, I'm laughing because scientists are far more creative. They're demonstrating God's creative ability and coming up with some of the most ridiculous explanations I've ever heard of for why God didn't do this. And he looked at me and said, really? I said, I know, baby, I don't understand it either. So all of that to say that there are things that God releases in seasons and in times. And there are patterns. And now here's the amazing thing. It's new every year, every month, every morning. Have you ever thought, how could God's mercies be new every morning? I mean, think about that. How many mornings have come and gone since that scripture thousands of years ago was released, his mercies are new every morning, and they're still new and will continue to be new every morning. So if he's got something new to release in the way of mercies, then there's new revelation that goes with it. But God sets things in order and in framework. Now the framework that he uses for the months are listed in the Jewish calendar and this month, which actually doesn't start until uh, sundown uh, on the 8th of May. Now today is the 6th, so this would be Sunday at sundown is actually the technically the beginning of the month that is called E-R, I-Y-A-R, E-R. There's 29 days in the month of E-R. Now, I'm going to do things a little bit differently um, only because I, I learned a long time ago that I can't be Prophet Catherine um, as much as I would like to be. I love her and I admire her greatly, but I have been sadly um, failed at trying to reproduce her in myself. So I'm just going to have to do it the Robin way. Um, so in this month of Iyar, there is, this is, it's called in the, in the Bible, I love this, it's Iyar, but it's also called Ziv. Now I'm sure you can see the connection between that, right? Iyar, Ziv, right? I didn't get it either, but it's okay. Uh, but it's also referred to, and this one you do need to get, it is referred to as the month of splendor. Now, they had a technical reason for it. God has a different reason for it. This is a month when God is going to show up and show out. Look out. 
It says it's because the splendor of the sun during this month. Now they're referring to it as the S-U-N. It's going to be the S-O-N that shows out this month. It's going to reach the height of its brilliance. And yet there's no heat from the summer to make it uncomfortable. See, here's what that means to us. As the body of Christ, when the sun, S-O-N, releases his brilliance this month, you're going to get to enjoy the beauty of the brilliance without any of the heat that goes along with it. Trust me, the heat's coming. But his people are going to experience his brilliance this month. And there's going to be a release. One of the symbols of this month is something called the letter, the Vav. The Vav, it looks like a tent peg. The Hebrew, there's a picture that goes with every Hebrew letter. And the picture often says as much as the word that describes it. And in this month, it is the Vav, which is a, looks like a tent peg, and it is designed to connect heaven with earth. Heaven on earth. What a coincidence that we sang that song. Now I've got to find out, where is, who, who, who put the song list together? Uh-huh, and she's not even here, huh? Well, who added heaven on earth? Because that wasn't on the list. Uh-huh. That's called prophetic. You see, I get the song sheet. I know what they're supposed to be singing. And look at there. What's the first song that comes out? Heaven on earth. It's just a coincidence. Don't worry about it. Okay. So one of the things that the Lord said to me was this is a month where you're going to experience literally heaven on earth. This is a month when God says he's bringing those things that we have been praying as it is in heaven, and he's going to release it here on earth. Listen, I don't, I, I, I'm not one of those who goes through rote prayers. But let me tell you, this month, I'm saying the Lord's Prayer a lot. Our Father who lives in heaven. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Listen, every situation that you have in your life that is not exhibiting heavenly qualities right now, you begin to declare this is the month as it is in heaven Let it be right here on earth. And you write it out. In this area, I want to see heaven on earth. I want to see as it is in heaven, I want to see it here on earth now in this month. Write it out. Now, don't presume to tell God what heaven looks like. I I don't know about you. Let me get my glasses on and make sure. Has anybody seen heaven? Anybody recently been there? Just checking. Sometimes that has happened. Okay. So here's the key. Don't presume to tell God what heaven's supposed to look like here on earth. And I will tell you that times it is very different from what you might think. So we don't tell God, God, this is what I need you to do. When you begin to declare, Lord, As it is in heaven, let it be on earth right here for this situation. Whether it's your health, whether it's your finances, whether it's your family relationships, whether it's the presidential race and the candidates and the options. Hello? Don't presume to tell God what that's supposed to look like. And don't look at me and think she's going to vote for Trump. (laughs) I'll be honest with you, I have no idea who I'm going to vote for. Because I'm not sure what I'm seeing right now may be the only choices we have. So you never know. But here's what I do know. 
when I pray, God, as it is in heaven, let it be here on earth, I'm on solid footing. I don't need to worry about that, all right? The other symbol that is often associated each month had a tribe associated with it. This month is associated with the tribe of Issachar. Now Issachar was the tribe that they said of it, they knew the times and the seasons. But it also means he brings reward. You see, when you know the times and the seasons, God can release his reward to you. Because when you're in lockstep with heaven, and you begin to pray, as it is in heaven, let it be here on earth, then God can release reward because it's in his timing, and it's in his seeding, and it's in his cadence. You see, there's a rhythm to how God does things in our lives. And when we release that to him and we step into the rhythm that God has, the cadence that God has for our lives, he can begin to bring his reward to us in areas that have been blocked to us in seasons past. So, <clears throat> and isn't it interesting that we kept singing heaven on earth and the glory of God? How about that? Okay. All right, so we, one of the other things that we often do is we look back in the Bible and we look at some of the things that have happened over the years biblically on and during the month that we're talking about during this month of ER. Um, and I went through, and there's a whole host of things, as you can imagine, after several thousand years, a number of things have happened on these dates, but there were some very specific things that I felt it was important that you know because God is speaking through those circumstances into this month. And so I'm going to go through those in just a minute. Um, but here's what I'd like for you to do. I want you to make a note to yourself for this month uh, because when I first began um, praying about this, this head of the month service, the Lord said two very specific things to me. He said, this is the month to listen for the still small voice. Now, we all go, yes, that's wonderful, yes, yay God. Um, and then we promptly step into the things that happen in our lives and the busyness and the, all the stuff that starts going on and we get wrapped up and we think we're just busy doing what we're doing. The reality is we have stepped into the enemy's camp because as we do that, he will always make sure that his voice is the loudest voice. And see, when you're in the enemy's camp, you're right in the midst of the stuff. So if you find yourself, and boy, am I ever preaching to myself on this one right now, I just, I. That's painful when God just gets you right there, right in the middle of you saying something. Yeah. Um, when, you are, when you are finding yourself, this is a month to let your hair down. Because I can't keep it up right now. All right, so hold on a minute. Here we go. Here we go. It's distracting. All right. Um, when you find yourself feeling, have you ever gotten home from work and you're just... You know, you still feel like you're driving the car. Anybody doing those long commutes? My poor husband commutes an hour and a half, 60 miles one way, 120 miles round trip every day that he is here in the Atlanta area working. And bless his heart, you know, it took me a while to figure out that when he walks in the door, don't say anything. <laughs> Just give him a minute. <laughs> and what happens is we either physically or emotionally or mentally, we get mm, and all the stuff going on. How many got stuff going on at work? It's little chaos going on, right? All kinds of turmoil, chaos going on at work. And then you come home and there's all sorts of stuff going on at home. And then you think, well, I'll just sit back and chill and you turn on the TV and there's all sorts of stuff going on, on the TV. And then you get a phone call and there's, hello. And after a while, you're just, yeah. you know. You're just a little wired. 
Um, what you've done is you have stepped into the enemy's chaos and he keeps it stirred and swirling because those voices continue the all of that is designed to keep you from listening to the still small voice okay. this is the month to find a way to still that listen even if it's five minutes even if it's five minutes and if you have to do it when you go Bless my, I, I, I never could figure out why my dad spent so much time in the bathroom. I'm sorry, dad, I didn't mean to tell everybody that. Um, there were four of us kids in the house, and we all of us at least had a friend around. And now I know why. I do, I know why he was hiding. He was just hiding in there. God, please let it be quiet for just a few minutes, right? Daddy's not listening, let me tell you anyway. So he got a prophetic word one time. And the prophetic word, the prophet said, and son, he did a lot of these and thous, you know. He says, and son, I have even seen thou when thou sittest in thine restroom and thou art communing with me on thine toilet. <laughs> that is the truth. Let me just say for those ministers who are in Life Center, Prophet Catherine ain't gonna let you get away with that one, all right? So don't even try it. <laughs> we don't talk about thine toilets in our prophetic words, okay? <laughs> but, but there comes a time when you have to still things. And if you have to hide in your closet, if you got toddlers, you know what I mean, whatever it takes. Find that moment when you turn off the radio, you turn off the phone, you turn off everything, and you just say, Lord, I love you. I want to hear what you have to say. This is the month when God's going to release some things as it is in heaven. You're going to begin to see things as it is in heaven. Because until you can see as it is in heaven, you can't, you, you can't translate that here. And so this is a month to be quiet and give God the opportunity to just speak, even if it's just a few minutes, to speak. And it doesn't have to be religious. It doesn't have to be these or thous. Just listen and hear what he has to say. Okay. Uh, the other thing that the Lord said was that in this month, there are suddenlies that are going to begin to happen. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about suddenlies. Um, because suddenlies are only sudden because it's, it's just in front of you. It doesn't mean that things have not been happening for a while. Have you ever heard of that, you know, they were an overnight sensation? If you've ever talked to anybody, it was an overnight sensation. They'd spent 10 years becoming an overnight sensation. And there are things in your life that God has been working on underground, quietly, behind the scenes that are going to begin to pop up this month. And they're going to begin to reveal themselves this month. And so... <laughs> I mean, how do you prepare for a suddenly because it's there suddenly? But don't be too shocked. And remember that God is releasing the suddenlies this month. Because there are going to be some of those suddenlies that you may not initially attribute to God. Okay. All right. So, um, so let's go about some of the things that have occurred in the month of ER that um, God began to highlight as things that he's going to begin to emphasize during this month. Um, in May, in the month of May, ER, on the second, uh, traditionally it says that Moses threw a piece of wood in the waters of Mara and they became sweet. The Lord says that there are those 
who have had very bitter waters that they have swallowed. And in this month, he's going to begin to sweeten those waters for you. God is removing roots of bitterness that have been embedded. And God said, you've tried to get rid of those roots, but the Lord says this month, I am going to supernaturally remove those roots from you and begin to sweeten the waters once again. On the third, uh, it was tradition that Yeshua shows himself to doubting Thomas. And the Lord said that this is the month that there are those in your family who have been teetering on the edge and they have been doubting that God is real and some of you are here. It ain't just your families. Because when things get delayed, we can become doubting Thomases. And the Lord says he's going to reveal himself to you this month and remove the doubt that his hand is on you and his hand is at work on your behalf. Amen? Um, this was also the month on the 6th of the fall of Jericho. And the Lord said that in this month, if you will focus on giving me a shout, if you will focus on giving me a shout of praise, you'll see some of those long-standing, impenetrable walls crumble miraculously at once. Amen? On the 10th of the month, uh, it was tradition that not only Solomon began to build the temple, but several hundred years later, 500, almost 500 years later, Zerubbabel began to rebuild the temple. And the Lord said that he is rebuilding his church. That to many, it looks like the church is completely in disarray. To the outside world, there does not look to be the glory of what was formerly the church. It doesn't appear to exist anymore. But the Lord says that he has his Cyruses. And those Cyruses provide the resources to rebuild the church. You might be surprised how God chooses to strengthen and rebuild his church in this season. Amen? Amen. Um, on the 15th, the wall around Jerusalem, which was built by Nehemiah, remember the temple started getting built first, and then they stopped and said, no, we got to do the wall to build protection so that that can get done. Uh, it was dedicated by Nehemiah, and God is this month putting a wall of protection around his church. There are some things coming in the months ahead, but the Lord says that he is putting his wall of protection around his church, that even though we, can, we will stand on the walls and see, but we will not be impacted by those things that are coming against those walls. God has dedicated those walls in this month. Amen? Um, it was interesting that on the 25th of the month, Noah's flood began. Now, what the Lord said was that, uh, and how many of you heard about the Azusa Street um, prayer meeting. There was one on the west coast and one on the east coast, one in Washington, D.C., and one in Azusa Street. And this was the, what is it, the 110th or 101st? 110th anniversary of the Azusa Seat Revival. Um, and I heard it, I've, I've heard it mentioned in a lot of different ways, but what the Lord said was it began a flood. And that the waters are rising, and they are going to cover this nation. And it's going to be a flood 
of God's revival. And it's coming from some of the most unusual places. And the Lord says, know that it is going to raise my church like Noah's ark was raised up on the floodwaters of that revival. And the Lord says, I've got a group that has been preserved for this season that is going to demonstrate my glory in this time. Amen? Amen. Um, this, on the 26th of the month, it was also the beginning of Haman's downfall in the book of Esther. And you remember that Haman was the one who had plotted and read the times and the seasons so that he had the precise day that he felt all of the demonic gods had aligned in order to destroy the Jewish nation. And God turned it on his head. And the very scaffold that he had set to destroy Mordecai ended up being the one he and his sons were hanged on. And that process began on the 26th of the month of ER. God says, I have begun the process of bringing down those who have plotted against my people. Watch that one. And on the 31st, uh, Moses struck the rock to provide water for the people. And the Lord said that in this month, there is going to be a release of the miraculous. An unusual and not just a suddenly, but a flood of the miraculous. We're going to hear of demonstrations of the miraculous that are coming from people who would never have said they were miracle workers. God says that the saints are going to begin to manifest miracles, and some of them, they're going to be more shocked than the people who receive the miracle. <laughs> You know, it would be wonderful if we all <coughs> got up that faith to do that, but I think God has quite frankly gotten a little impatient with us and said, I'm just going to release it, and if it shocks both of them, then so be it. <laughs> so don't be surprised if God uses you to release a miracle because in this season, he will get those miracles accomplished because, you see, there's a timing for that. And it's God's timing. And whether you are aware of it or not, he's going to do it. Amen? Amen? An unusual month this month. 